This is a Hanasuki. I remember the first time I used a Hanasuki. I boarded off a friend in a kitchen. I cut apart a chicken. As soon as I was done, I put down the knife. I picked up my phone. I called Kevin at Knifeware and said, dude, have you got a Hanasuki for me? These are awesome knives designed for poultry, but you can make them do all kinds of other stuff. We're gonna show you what we're gonna do with one today. We got a piece of beef, a duck, and a fish. Typically, you're not gonna be using your Japanese kitchen knife around bones. You especially don't wanna try and go through bones with your Japanese kitchen knife. However, Hanasukis are designed to deal with that kind of a problem. We're still gonna be mindful of what we do with the bones, but with the Hanasuki, they've been designed to be a thicker blade, which makes them a, a tougher blade, even though the steel is super hard. That hardness is gonna help it to keep its really wicked sharp edge. When I go through the joints of the bones, I'm gonna use the heel of the knife. That way, if I do damage it, it'll be on the back end, which means I'm gonna keep the top part of the knife nice and sharp for cutting through the meat and the skin. Basically, I use the back end like an ax, and the front end like a knife. Let's take a look at this duck before we start sticking our knife in it. First, we've got a utility duck here today. We're missing a leg. I, I, there's a little pirate duck action here today. But what we wanna do is figure out where we're gonna go. You have a keel bone down the middle between the two breasts separating the breast. That's gonna be a guiding line when we take the breast off. I'm also gonna try and locate where my wishbone is because that can get in the way. I've got a shoulder here with the wing, and then I've got a leg joint on the back here. Those are gonna be the three places I'm gonna separate the duck at. I like to start at the breast because it keeps the duck a little bit more stable when you've got his legs on or leg on. So I start by finding that line right down the middle and I'm gonna cut just on either side of it. Now I'm gonna run into a wishbone here and the wishbone is gonna come down towards the shoulder. So I'm gonna find it here with my knife and go down towards the shoulder. There it is right there. Now I can see the keel bone in here. And so I'm riding the edge of the knife along the keel bone. And I'm riding, in fact, the top of the bevel of the edge here, which just lifts the edge off of the bones ever so slightly. I really like that about a thicker Hanasuki because it keeps you from snagging the edge on the bones. Now as I'm coming through, I'm starting to just see fat. I can see where I've run to the end of the meat. So we can cut this fella off. Now I don't want to have the wing bone on the duck breast, so I'm going to cut above. If I wanted to keep the wing on for a fancy presentation, I would cut below and that way the wing would remain attached to the breast. All right, one duck breast. Let me get the second one off. Again, down to the wishbone. Down to the shoulder. Following along the rib cage until I run out of duck meat. Okay, two breasts. All right, now we're gonna do the leg and the thigh. We're gonna take them off together, and then afterwards we can separate the two of them. If you look in at the leg, it pulls away from the rib cage naturally. And you can in fact see a white line in here. That's where the two pieces of meat join, so my knife is gonna go in there and follow that seam. You can hear that I'm, the knife is coming into contact with the bone, but I'm also not driving with a lot of power. I'm letting the knife do the work. That way, I'm not jamming the edge into the bones, damaging the, uh, the edge of the knife. When I get to this point, I find the back of the thigh bone, pull it back, and that exposes the joint. Now I come down towards that, following along the bones again. There we go, duck leg ready for some confit. Hanasukis are designed for chicken. Ducks are basically the same anatomy, same kind of thing. Duck, goose, turkey, quail, guinea fowl, hen, pigeon, those are the same. Great for any kind of bird. So that's why we've used a duck here today as an example of all the great things you can do with a Hanasuki. That 
We couldn't find a chicken. Don't throw your duck carcass in the garbage. Take this guy, put it in the oven, roast it at a lower temperature to render out all of the fat. Use the bones to make a delicious stock. You can use the bones that, uh, from your duck. You can mix it with chicken and make a really rich poultry stock. Save that duck fat. It's beautiful for cooking with. It's also really nice to submerge the duck legs in and slowly roast them to make a confit. It's a delightful thing. The fat's really beautiful. So please try to make use of the whole animal if you can. If you just want to render the fat, you can take the skin and the fat, cut it off, just cut the skin and the fat off if you want only to render the fat down. Don't forget the Pope's nose. It's got really great fat in there. Now you can just take these bits, chop them up into chunks, put them in a pot, low heat, and slowly let all the fat come out. Then separate the fat from the liquid once it's cooled down. When you want to remove the wing, first thing first, locate the joint. The easiest way to do that is just to move the wing around and you'll see where it pivots. There's a little line right through there. Now, I'm gonna try and go through here with the heel of the blade. And I just push down. It's really thick, so that makes it really strong. That way, if I do run into the bone and chip the knife, I'm not terribly concerned. Okay, let's take this other wing off. Again, first I find where the joint articulates, pull the knife up towards it, using the heel to go through the knuckle. And by through, I mean between the knuckle. I'm not trying to cut through the bone. If you do, it's not the end of the world. Again, using the back end of your Hanasuki to do the tough ax-like work, saving the top of the blade for the thin, fine slicing work. To separate the leg is really easy. There's a fun trick here that works on both chickens, any kind of bird. There's a line of fat right here. That line of fat is where the joint is. And if you line your knife up with that line and push down, you'll go right through the joint every time. If you wanted to have a boneless thigh, you find both ends of the bone, draw your knife down one side and then down the other trying not to go all the way down through the meat and splitting it in half. Find the underside of the bone with your fingers and then pull your knife back and forth to remove it. There's a little bit of the knuckle around here so sometimes you take off a little extra so you don't get that plasticky bit. There we go, boneless duck thigh. We're gonna go a little off course with our Hanasuki and use it to cut a fish. But it's a chicken knife, Mike. You can't use it to cut a fish. Watch me. I'm gonna do it, and I might even do it badly because it's been quite a long time. I live in a landlocked place where we don't get a lot of fish, so I expect you to make fun of me in the comments below. I'm gonna swap out knives here. This has been the Masashi Hanasuki. It's a banging knife. I'm gonna switch up. I'm gonna use my Koishi. Koishis are super great knives too. I like this one. It's a little bit thinner than most Hanasukis, which I find great. It makes it pretty reasonable to use as a multi-purpose knife. And uh, I think it's gonna do a good job on this little mackerel guy here. So, here we go. So I just opened up the guts and I'm gonna yank these guts out here. I'm sure you can cook them and eat them, but not, not for me today. I'm gonna come in behind the gills here, behind these little fins and just take the head off. Now I'm gonna go using the back here of the blade, I'm gonna go through the spine, take it off. I like having a piece of paper towel handy when I'm cutting up a piece of fish. Sometimes when they're damp or, or wet, they're just a little bit slippery. Using a little piece of paper towel can really help keep a bit of a grip, which is nice so you don't run into your hand. I'm gonna come in from the dorsal fin here, from the back side, trying to feel along the bones. Yeah, okay, there we are. We're at the, the spine, just like that. Now I'm gonna spin it over and come in from the inside. Get some of the rib cage out of the way. So I'm just pulling the flesh back slightly, 
trying not to break it too badly until I run into that spine again. Pop it off at the tail and it connects with the cut in from the back. Now I'm going to do the other side same way. I'm going to pull it to the edge of the cutting board so my knife can come flat down. As I slide the knife through the back side, I can feel the tip of the knife bumping along the vertebrae. So I know I've come into the middle, so I'm going to flip over and do the other side. Going in towards the spine again. All right, I'm no pro, but I think I did all right there. Now we got our two sides here of mackerel. I'm going to take my knife and see if I can get out any of the other bones left behind here on the belly. You know, I like using a Hanazuki for a fish because it's, it's stiff and it's a little thicker, kind of like a Deba is, but it's double-sided. It doesn't have the tendency to want to travel one direction or the other like a single-sided knife does. And I find it uh, just the right length for doing most fish. So I think a Hanasuki, if you started to practice with it, you'd find it was a great knife for filleting smaller fish. So Hanasukis are designed for chicken, right? Well, you can do a lot of other stuff with it. Now, it's not bendy or flexible like a typical boning knife, and it's got a lot taller profile, so it's not quite as good at going around curves. However, if you're just cleaning a piece of meat, those features of the flexibility and the narrow skinny blade aren't really that necessary. As you, you might have seen, I just did a fish with it and it would, turned out okay. So we're gonna take this piece of beef, we're gonna trim some of the silver skin off, see how it goes. It's a really versatile knife. The Honosuke is not a, a one trick pony. So it's got a nice tip so I can do that, that piercing to, to start the incision. Then I just take the silver skin and pull it back. So again, I take a tip, poke it in underneath, slide it along. I'm trying to just take off the silver skin, not too much meat. However, if you take all these bits of beef trim and you roast them just like you're roasting bones for a stock, they'll make a fantastic jus, especially if you're adding that liquid to the bottom of your roasting pan after you've made your roast beef. You chuck some shallots and garlic and a sprig of fresh thyme, you've got a nice light little jus to finish your steak with. Using the Honosuke is working really well here. It's doing a great job of getting in and underneath the sinew and cleaning off this bit of fat. So if you're looking for a boning knife, and really what you're trying to do is just clean up bits of meat that you're buying sort of a grocery store level, I think you'll probably find a Hanasuki is gonna be manageable for most of the tasks that you're looking to do. If you're a hunter or you're getting whole animals or, or, or poor primals or something, and you're really into doing butchery, look for a proper boning knife, and that's definitely stuff that we've got. But Honosukis are super cool and they're very helpful. They can use them for lots of purposes as we're, as we're seeing here today, not just cutting apart chickens. And if your job is cutting apart chickens, like if you work at a yakitori restaurant and your day consists of cutting apart chickens and putting them on sticks, why wouldn't you design the perfect knife for deboning poultry? And that's just what they've done. Yakitori is a popular thing in Japan. If you haven't had it, you should eat it. It's delicious. Get a conro, buy some charcoal, butcher a chicken, put it on sticks, brush it with some soy sauce, bingo bango, it's a delightful way to eat. This is a great knife to help you get there. Hanasuki are great for chickens, taking them apart. They're good for a little bit of fish, they're good for a little bit of beef, but it's a really super great size. You can use this for other stuff too. We're gonna dice an onion, see how it goes. We have customers that want to keep their knife set a bit minimal and they want something that's multi-purpose. Not uncommon to get a Hanasuki for doing butchery and utility knife style of stuff. Nice thing as a utility knife is you've got a taller heel so you can get into a chopping motion without bashing your knuckles. It's a little bit of a thicker blade so it doesn't pass as smoothly through the food. But this Fujimoto Hanasuki has got a nice bevel to it, so it's really thin right behind the edge. Clearly I'm having no troubles chopping this onion with this, this Hanasuki. 
Look at that, Honosuke dices onion. No problemo. This has been fun, putting a Honosuke to a test, seeing what it can and can't do. Phenomenal, phenomenal knife for taking apart any kind of a bird or small game. It's super good at that job. It was actually really quite good at taking apart the fish as well. The beef, it was pretty good. I think it was a little thick to get nice and fine underneath that sinew, but I don't really care. I'm gonna take the leftover bits there and I'm gonna make a great jus in a pan and I'm gonna have a delicious sauce to splash on top of my roast afterwards. What a great little knife. I really think that you should consider getting one if you want something that can be great at doing some butchery stuff, but versatile for other small jobs, go for a Hanasuki. I love it, it's great. Hanasukis are rad. Tell us what other knives you wanna see. We have a link to the Hanasukis in the description. Put your ideas of what you wanna see us cut in the comments below. Check out the next video to learn more about other knives. Honosukis, they're designed for ki kitchens? Chickens, both really. <laughs> Put your chicken in the kitchen. And then maybe mention like, one of the advantages of having a duck is all this beautiful fat and then maybe... Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Look at that, Honosuke dices onion. No problemo. I don't know, Mike, you didn't do the horizontal cut. The, uh, the internet might get mad at you. I'm fired. Leave me a comment below telling me I suck at cutting onions. If you like this video, please check out our other videos and tell us what you want, what you, what you really, really want. Yeah!